All right. Shalom, Israel. How you doing? Happy Sabbath. Uh, yeah, once again, another class inspired by foolishness. Um, as usual, the haters continue to hate. And each Sunday, they continue to hate. We grow all the more. And we'll continue to do so. Um, this class is entitled The Image of God. Image of God. Um, because there's videos on YouTube regarding burnished brass, how burnished brass is white now. I don't know how that happens. I don't know how burnished brass is white, but whatever that means. Um, even though they say that Christ is black, they do videos saying that, you know, burnished brass is white. I'm confused. So apparently, they're, too, they are, they're also confused. So to clear up the confusion altogether, we're going to open up with 1 Corinthians 15 and 39. Because you oftentimes say people say, well, God is a spirit. He has no color. He's a spirit. As you always hear, you hear that all the time from people in Christianity, particularly black folks. The white folks will say he's white in a heartbeat. They acknowledge that the, that the Messiah and Heavenly Father are spirits, but they also acknowledge that he looks like them, white folks. Falsely so. Falsely. Not kind of. Falsely so. All right? But yet, for some odd reason, when it comes to our people, oh, he's a spirit and he has no color. The slave mind is a dangerous mind. That's mine. It's a dangerous mind. All right? So now, let's get um, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 39. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. So the most I made, when he made, created life, each life is made differently. Human beings are made differently from fish, fish from beasts, beasts from birds. They all have flesh and blood, but there's different types, different kinds of flesh and blood. It's not the same. All right? Read on. Diversities. Go ahead. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. So there are celestial bodies. Body, celestial means of the heavens. Celestial bodies. Go ahead. And terrestrial means of the land, like the, like the term terrain. You're driving on terrain. It's land. Go ahead. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Go ahead. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. Uh -huh. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Right, you have different stars that they are made. They all di they're all different in glory. They're, they're different amongst each other. The sun and the moon are different. They're both lights in the heavens, stars as well, but they're different. The sun is different from the moon. Even though they both give us light, they're both diverse, diverse lights. Likewise, when the most high created creatures, man, beasts, birds, and, and uh, whatever, and beasts and birds, they were diverse in creation, diverse. So now, uh, we're going to deal with celestial regarding the heavens. Not now, celestial I'm referring to now is referring to the heavenly bodies as in the most high's creations, angels, spirits. They're made differently from us as well. Let's get Genesis 18, verse 1. Because I heard spirit has no, but God is a spirit. He has no body. Okay. Genesis 18, verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 1. Uh -huh. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. So remember verse 1, read verse 1 again. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. So these aren't regular men. It says, and the Lord appeared unto him. Him is Abraham. Go ahead. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Uh -huh. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. He appeared in front of him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. Because he knew who it was. Go ahead. And said, my Lord. If now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Don't leave, stay here. Go ahead. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Read again, verse 4. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched. Some of the drink. And wash your feet. Stop. And wash your feet. So these men were angels. And he said, let me give you some water for them to drink, and let me wash your feet. Because they were walking on feet. Physical. Not, oh, what is, what is in front of me? I can't see it. It's a spirit. 
Is that what we're reading? No. Go ahead. And rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant? And they said, so do as thou hast said. He said no problem, we'll stay here. Go ahead. And Abraham, and Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the, unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good. And gave it unto a young man. His servant. And he hasted to dress it. And he cooked it. Go ahead. And he took butter and milk. And the calf. Stop. So he gave the angels butter and milk. Because the doctrine among the so-called is you can't eat dairy and meat at the same time. But Abraham is feeding these people, feeding these angels butter, milk, and what else? And the calf. And meat. So what, what's going on? Why would, why would Abraham give an angel something that he himself cannot eat? Make no damn sense. Go ahead. Which he had dressed and, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. So they ate. The angels ate. So they can eat. They can walk. They can feet can be washed. They can eat. These are spirits now. Are angel spirits? Yes, they are. Get 19 verse 1. Same, same book, chapter 19 verse 1. So we have three angels that visit Abraham. Let's see what happens in Genesis 19. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. There's two angels here now, rather than three. Go ahead. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house. Just like Abraham told them, Lot said the exact same thing. This is Abraham's nephew, Lot. Go ahead. And tarry all night and wash your feet. What? And wash your feet. <laughs> So these are spirits saying to me, wash your feet. Wash your feet. These are angels now. Go ahead. And ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Nah, we, won't, nah, we good. We're going to stay outside. Go ahead. And he pressed upon them greatly. And he begged them, come on, come inside, come inside. Because he knew it was out there. Go ahead. And they turned in unto him and entered into his house. Watch this. And he made them a feast mm -hmm. and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. Mm. So angels like unleavened bread. They like bread. They like milk. They like water. They like food. They like meat. They eat. And they walk. Go ahead. But before they lay down, the men of the city. So they even sleep. Before they lay down, they want to relax. Go ahead. The men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. Round the house. Turn to Lot's house. Go ahead. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Uh -huh. Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. No, no means rape them or lay with them. These guys are homosexuals. Go ahead. And Lot Vicious homosexuals. Go ahead. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. Lot, goes out, Lot comes outside of the storm and closes the door behind them. So they couldn't get in. Go ahead. And said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Because you had Hebrews among them in that land. There were Hebrews there. Brethren, don't do this, he's saying. Because you had Hebrews among them that were evil as well. Go ahead. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Right. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn. This guy's an outsider. He's a foreigner. Go ahead. And he will needs be a judge. Now you can tell us what to do now. now you're, our, you're our boss now. Go ahead. Now will, we, now will we deal worse with thee than with him. Now we're going to do worse to you than we're going to do with these men here in your house. Go ahead. And they pressed sore upon the man. Even Lot and came near to break the door. Yeah, so Lot was trying to, because Lot understood what they were doing was, was get them killed. He was trying to, listen, take my doors instead, man, because you guys are messing with angels. Take my doors instead. He was trying to save them, help them out. Listen, don't do this thing. You don't know what you're dealing with for now. So he's trying to fight them from getting into his house. So he's trying to break his door down. Go ahead. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house so to the them. the men pulled Lot into the house. Go ahead. And shut to the door. And close the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they were worried themselves to find the door. So these men were so disgusting. Even when the angels blinded them outside, they were still trying to find a way to get in the house. Blind. That's how nasty and vile they were. Still trying to rape somebody blind. 
Disgusting, man. Disgusting. Yeah, he he said that the angels had to pull Lot in because Lot, at the moment, he didn't understand the the fierce demons that was on these brothers, that was on these men. He said, no, man, you don't understand what kind of demon you're dealing with. Let me pull them in and smack them behind with blindness because these dudes is is stone-cold wicked. Right. Hey, and also, right, that's, that's for you brothers that like messing with them homos, man. Some of them homos is gangsters. They gonna whoop you behind, because it, <laughs> and take it, cause you're so you're you you're so um. Then I show a video like a couple years back with a dude getting beat up, and the dude was humping the dude while he beating him up, you know. So no, no, for sure. Listen, these these you might say because these dudes is homosexuals, they soft or they weak. No, some of these homos. Is martial artists and stuff like that. They will whoop you behind. <laughs> Al- Alexander the Great was homosexual. He took the world over in 12 years. Fighting, warring. The dark nations, too. Not regular, he's fighting with dark, strong nations. And in all his gay glory took over the world in 12 years. And died of gay. Of course, he died of syphilis. Another story. But that's up. don't underestimate them. They're still men. They're homosexual, but they're still men. They'll take it. They'll take it. Booty warrior, man. <laughs> Take it. There's the 32. May ruin that. There's 32, verse 24. <laughs> I like you. I want you. You do it the easy way or do it the hard way? Oh, you see, you want to do it the hard way. Uh, what verse, Deacon? Uh, verse 24. Genesis 32, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. So Jacob is fighting with his man, and the man touched his thigh and put out a place. That's a horrible pain. So Jacob's fighting with a dude. Imagine he's fighting with a dude. He takes his hand, touch your thigh, and you turn just dislocate. You finish, man. But Jacob held on to this guy. He kept fighting him. Go ahead. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. He broke it. Go ahead. As he wrestled with him. So dislocated it. Go ahead. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. Right. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. he knew what he was dealing with. Go ahead. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Uh-huh. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Go ahead. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. So, he, he, uh, so angel asked Jacob his name. He said, okay, well, I'll give you what's your name. I'll give you mine. What's yours? Go ahead. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? What you asking that for? Go ahead. And he blessed him there. <laughs> Mind your business. Remember my name. And right. Jacob called the name of the place Pen- Peniel. Uh-huh. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. So he wasn't fighting an ordinary man. There was an angel once again. That's why he said that. Named it Peniel. Now let's get Hosea 12 to confirm it. Hosea 12, verse 3, to confirm what he, who he was wrestling. Hosea chapter 12, verse 2. Mm-hmm. The Lord hath also a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways. Uh-huh. According to his doings will he recompense him. He took his brother by the heel in the womb. Hold on, where we at? Where we at? What verse are we at? You said Hosea chapter 12? Yeah, 12, verse 3. Verse 3. Where are you reading from? That was verse 2. Okay, go ahead. Verse 3. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. Uh Uh-huh, watch this. Yay. He had power over the angel. Over what? Over the angel. Over the angel, go ahead. And prevailed. Uh Uh-huh, the angel told him, go ahead. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. So, right there, he said he prevailed. He had power over the angel. Only because the angel allowed him to, of course. The angel saw he was, how company he was and how he handled himself. So also for that, you prevailed. The name is now Israel. All right? The angel could have touched him and blew him to pieces. He, was, he wasn't actually winning. Right. That showed, you, that showed you that the angel wanted to bless him. Right. Because he said, I'm going to lower myself enough for you to overcome so that I can give you the blessing. Right. The angels are the one that made the earth. <laughs> so you know, talking well, that was with Christ. So <laughs> you already know that he could have wiped them out with, with a thought. Not even lift a finger. So the most high allowed that thing. That was predestined. Judges 13 and verse 1. Let's get some more instances about angels. 
Judges 13, verse 1. The book of Judges, chapter 13, and verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. Yeah. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and bare not. Uh -huh. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman go again. and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not. You have any children. But thou shalt conceive and bear a son. You will eventually get pregnant and have a child. Go ahead. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So Samson was a Nazarite from birth. Go ahead. Just like Samuel was. Just like John the Baptist was. Go ahead. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Right. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. Go ahead. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Mm -hmm. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. Mm -hmm. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that speakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. Uh -huh. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? How shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She told you that's what you do regarding the child. Go ahead. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine. Neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. Mm -hmm. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee. Let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. Those three people keep offering the angels food. You keep offering them, you want something to eat? You want something to eat? These angels. So again, angels, they eat. They walk. They, they, they have bodies, physical bodies to eat with, to walk with. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. Uh -huh, this if, one they want to eat. Go ahead. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. So Manoah was an angel. Go ahead. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? Here we go again. What is your name? That when thy saying come to pass, we may do thee honor. We can tell others, the angel named so-and-so told us that you was going to have a baby. What, what, what can we say... What's your name? So we can tell the people that an angel by the name of so-and-so blessed us. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is a secret? Once again, it's none of your business. So it might be the same angel from before, but that's another thing. Go ahead. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. Uh -huh. For it came to pass, when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, uh -huh. that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. Dang. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. The angel took the fire with him into the heavens. That's crazy right there. You see fire come off the altar, and the angel just takes the fire and flies up in the air with it. Takes fire up with him. How do you take fire with you? That's crazy. That's why I said Jacob fought the angel, man. Was, he was playing with him. Angel could take fire and go and fly in the air with it. Oh, fire. Oh, wow. Who's fly with this? That's another level, man. That's another level. Taking fire and flying with it. Get to it five. One scripture says the angel walks in the sun. Remember Revelations? Angel that walk in the sun? Standing in the sun. Standing in the sun. Tobit 5, verse 4. Tobit, chapter 5, and verse 4. 
Therefore, when he went to seek a man, he found Raphael that was an angel. Right, because Tobit, this is Tobit, I'll say Tobit Jr. Tobit Sr. asked him to go travel to collect money from, collect money from someone that owed him. So he said, before you go there, have someone travel with you. Get a travel companion to go with you on this journey to collect for me. Go ahead. But he knew not. And he said unto him, Canst thou... Verse 4 again. Therefore, when he went to seek a man, he found Raphael that was an angel. So this is an angel's name. Raphael is one angel's name. You have Uriel, Raphael, Michael, Gabriel. Those four mentioned by name. So this is Raphael here. Go ahead. But he knew not. He didn't know this is Raphael the angel. He didn't know that. Go ahead. And he said unto him, Canst thou go with me to rages? And knowest thou, thou those places well? He needed a guide. Go ahead. To whom the angel said, I will go with thee, and I know the way well, for I have lodged with our brother Gabel. Then Tobias said unto him, Tarry for me till I tell my father. Right. Stay right here. So I tell my father I have, I have someone to travel with. Stay right here. I'll be right back. Go ahead. Then he said unto him, Go and tarry not. So he went in and said to his father, Behold, I have found one which will go with me. Then he said, Call him unto me, that I may know of what tribe he is, and whether he be a trusty man to go with thee. So when a, when a man's father had his father, his child go somewhere, so make sure you have a brother. I want to see what tribe he's from. Make sure he's your people to travel with you. Not some regular heathen or stranger, but your brother. Or what tribe, I want to know what tribe he is. Let me talk to him. Go ahead. So he called him, and he came in. And they saluted one another. Uh, go ahead. Then Tobit said unto him, Brother, show me of what tribe and family thou art. Wait, tell, me about, tell me about yourself. What tribe are you from? What family are you from? I may know them. Go ahead. To whom he said, Dost thou seek for a tribe of family or an hired man to go with thy son? Uh -huh. Then Tobit said unto him, I would know, brother, thy kindred and name. So he ignored him. Listen. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the angel asked him a question. He goes, Listen, what's your name? What's your tribe? He um, avoided that. He, Tobit didn't care about that stuff. I asked you a question. What's your family? What's your tribe? Go ahead. Then he said, I am Azarias, the son of Ananias the Great, and of thy brethren. Of your people. I'm of your tribe. Go ahead. Then Tobit said, Thou art welcome, brother. Oh, okay. I know you. Go ahead. Be not now angry with me, because I have inquired to know thy tribe and thy family. For thou art my brother of an honest and good stock. For I know Ananias and Jonathan, sons of the great Samias, as he went together to Jerusalem to worship. And offered the firstborn and the tenths of the fruits, and they were not seduced with the error of our brethren. My brother, thou art of a good stock. Now watch this. So this angel, when he came up and he said, "Oh, you're of the, you're of the, my tribe," that means the angel looked like them, because this rice is black. So the angel came in the form of a black man. So I know you. Okay, you're so and so son. Wow. Okay, you're my tribe. The angel, not angel, was not his tribe at all, but he came in that form though. And he came in the form of a black man. Nothing new. Because that's how they look like that naturally. Remember, the woman said his, his, he, he looked terrible. But she knew there was a man. She knew. Oh, uh, yeah. What verse is this? That was verse uh, 13. That's all I want. Give me Psalms 104 now. For him to believe him, he had to look like Israel. For him to believe that he was of a tribe, he had to look like Israel. Psalms 104, verse 3. Because they say God is the spirit. He has no color. He's just a spirit. Okay. Psalms 104, verse 3. Psalms 104, verse 3. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Uh -huh. Who maketh his angels spirits. Who what? Who maketh his angels spirits. Uh -huh. His ministers are flaming fire. So his angels are what? Spirits. Spirits. And we read earlier throughout the scriptures that they were offered food, water to drink, feet to be washed, almost got raped by a bunch of wicked, wicked people in Sodom. So, they are, so you're not going to rape something you can't see. They were seen. You understand? So there's no, oh, God says, yeah, he is a spirit, but he has a body. Like his angels have bodies, but they're celestial bodies, heavenly bodies. Different kind from ours. Way different from ours. Yeah, oh, that's coming a little later. Hebrews 13, verse 2. I'll say the best. Hebrews 13, verse uh to give an idea of 
we read earlier regarding the situation with Samson's parents. Because they didn't know. Lot knew. Abraham knew. But Manoah and his wife did not know. And sometimes we don't know. Or all, most of the time we don't know. Hebrews 13 verse 2. Hebrews 13 verse 2. Remember them that are in bonds. I'm sorry, verse 2. Yeah. Hebrews 13, verse 2. Yep. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, uh -huh. for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Entertain what? Some have entertained angels unawares. Be mindful who you talk to, because sometimes you come across them. Angels do come down and talk to you. They give you certain advice that makes sense. You're like, well, you know, that's, that's a good idea. Thanks, man. You never see him again. Read it again. Read it again. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. So, so some of these angels were mistaken as strangers, meaning people. Mm -hmm. That's what the Most High is saying. Mm -hmm. Y'all get that? They say, well, you just think it's just an ordinary brother or this is an angel. So that's letting you know that like what you're reading, the angels come in the forms of men. Yep. Clear. That's easy to understand. They say, you think it's a man that is actually an angel. Now, so my Bible has reference as Genesis 18 and 3, and it has 19 and 2. We're going, referring to Abraham and referring to Lot. Some of the Bibles have the same thing. Some of yours don't. But mine has those two scriptures as reference to entertaining angels unawares. All right? Well, them, well, them pretty much appearing as men. That's the point. Them appearing as men. So now, let's get chapter 2, verse 16. Hebrews 2, verse 16. Regarding the nature of angels. Hebrews, Hebrews 2. Yeah, you know what I want. Chapter 2, verse 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. So the nature of angels is different from the nature of men. It's not the same. It's celestial. Go ahead. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. Christ took on him the terrestrial body. Flesh and blood. Like all of us in this room. That's the body he took on him. So he was not some angelic being walking on the earth. He was a regular man that was able to do Miraculous works in the flesh. Yeah. That's why I use the word but. Read it right. again. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but. Stop. But. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. He took on him the seed of Abraham. Seed of Abraham meaning sperm from a man's penis, so you can understand. Yep. Go ahead. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him. Behooved means they found it right or suitable. To be made like unto his brethren. How are we made in this room? Do what? Is that clear? He was made like his brethren, his disciples, his people. He was made like them. Go ahead. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. Why merciful? Because he can relate to what we relate to. He can relate to us. Okay, you lusting? I understand. Are you going through that? I understand. Because he's a man like you and I. An angel can't understand what you and I go through. They can't understand that because they're, they're a different creation from us. They're different from us. Go ahead. In things pertaining to God uh -huh. to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Or atonement. Go ahead. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted. Because he was a man. He is able to succor them that are tempted. Or comfort them because he can, he's going through the same thing every other man or woman goes through. Spiritually. All right? So now, let's get Luke 24, 38. Let's get some more confirmation on how he came into the world. This is when he returned back from the dead. Luke 24, and he scared his disciples. Luke 24, verse 38. I think that's it. Hold on. Read, we'll start from verse uh, 36. Luke. Now, no, now, Luke 24, to give you all a little bit of what's going on, the Messiah was killed, three days have gone by, and then a man appears, I think it was Peter and another brother walking, walking, down, walking in the way. And a man appears to them who was Christ, but they didn't know it was him because he blinded their eyes so they wouldn't know it was him, right? And, and they, then he talks to them, and they realize it's him, then he vanishes. So watch this. Read verse 36. Luke 24, verse 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Shalom. So now he appears somewhere else out of nowhere. Say, hey, shalom. 
So you know what all math leaves? If someone appears right here and says, Shalom, everyone's going everyone's to run. I'm running, everyone's running. We out. We're going. I'm not staying for that. The dude appeared out of nowhere in the room and said, Shalom, like, like nothing. Peace be unto you. Shalom. Go ahead. But they were terrified right. and affrighted. Naturally. Naturally. Go ahead. And suppose that they had seen a spirit. A ghost, a spirit. What the hell, what the hell is this? It came out of nowhere. Go ahead. And he said unto them. Remember, they think, remember they think he's dead. So they think this, this, this must be a spirit then. Go ahead. And he said unto them, why are ye troubled? What's wrong with y'all? Go ahead. And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet. Look at my hands and my feet. Go ahead. That it is I myself. It's me. Handle me and see. Look at me. Go ahead. For a spirit yeah, has touch, touch me. Handle me and touch me. Yeah, physical. Go ahead. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Read that bottom part again. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Different. A spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. He was killed that way, and he came back the same way he was killed, with flesh and bone. That's why I said what you just read earlier, for he took not on him the nature right. of angels. It's going right. right back to that. Going right back to that again. A spirit have not flesh and bones as you see me have. They pierced his feet. They pierced his hands. He said, feel me. And his side. And the holes are still there. Let's go to Matthew 8, verse 16. Still dealing with spirits now. So when he appeared to them, he appeared to them as a man. A regular man as he was when he was put to death. He appeared to them the same way. Matthew 8, 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 16. Could you read, you, know, hold on. you ain't piercing on angel or nothing. You're not, you're not touching them. They can stand in the sun. You're not piercing that. You can't put that across. Hey, you, Michael, hey, get in the cross. Put your hands right there. I'll stab you. That's not happening. That's fairy tales. The angels can make you pierce yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make you pierce yourself. Put yourself on the cross. <laughs> Matthew 8, verse 16. Matthew 8, verse 16. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. Keep that in mind, possessed with devils. Go ahead. And he cast out the spirits with his word. The devils are the spirits in the same verse. He did what? He cast out what? And he cast out the spirits with his word uh -huh. and healed all that was sick. So the devils are unclean spirits. The word devil is, is English, but in Greek it's demon or demon. He used to use that word all the time. Demon, you're a demon, demon, demon. That's unclean spirit. Devil or demon is not, or synonymous. All right? So devil or unclean spirits. Get, uh, chapter, same book, 10 verse 1. Matthew 10 verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Devils. To cast them out. And to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So the same power Christ had, he gave to his disciples. He gave it to them to do the same. To cast out unclean spirits or demons out of people. And it says here, it says to clear all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now you know what caused the disease. It's unclean spirits that cause disease, that reside within you. So you can't get rid of them. Some you can't get rid of at all. That demon is there for life. AIDS is a demon. Syphilis is a demon. Or an unclean spirit. Down syndrome or cancer can be is one. All these diseases can be one. Or what else? Uh, major diseases. Those are spirits. Mental diseases, mental illnesses. That's all. As people have schizophrenia, they hear voices. That's not voices. That's unclean spirits in the people. Talking to them. That's what it is. That's why people get high on certain things. And then they, their mind is gone. They smoked the demon inside. There was a demon rolled up in that thing. They just <laughs> sucked the demon inside. Oh, man, I'm crazy. They start seeing stuff. Oh, what's that over there? Nothing. It is now. Because <laughs> they smoked the demon. So, y'all understand, those are unclean spirits. Yeah, you demon. see things. You start having para paranoia. Um, even let, let the two. Why? You get too drunk, they call it spirits. They put spirits on you. Certain substances of too much consumption or, or at all, or consumption of any kind, put spirits on you. People get high, you're going to go to the spirit world. Yeah, the spirit of Satan. That's where you go. The spirit, you, know, you don't talk about it. Spirit world. I mentioned me saying that right, stuff. Right, right. The spirit world. Yeah, okay. Spirit you got, world. Right. You have a demon laying dormant inside your head. Yep. 
then you smoke the ganja, and the ganja and the the demon was waiting for the ganja that was in the spliff. Yep. I'm then it right connects. That spliff it and says, right "Yeah, yeah, come on in here. Yeah, we're gonna or get that, together." Or on that needle. <laughs> hey, or um, if you sniff it up. Go ahead. Yeah, that's why you got like a lot of um a lot of mu- mu- musicians and so forth that play guitars and different instruments and so forth. A lot of them smoke a lot of marijuana because they say it opened their um. Yeah, yeah. And what it really does, it gives them a connection with Satan. The demons come in because some of them might be a little more creative. But it's a demon that's on them. Why they be in the way how they, how they be at. I don't know if, if, anyone, will, when, if anyone of you all listen, ever listen to Little Wayne sing. You know, that dude got demons on him. You know, whoever see Little Wayne sing or talk. You know, and he just, he smoke weed all the time. He be on the interview smoking weed. You know, you could tell he got a demon on him. So some of these um, musicians and so forth, you know, they go and they, they smoke a lot of marijuana and it does open them to, to the spiritual realm. But when it, the spiritual realm open to them, you know, their demons be jumping on them. James 2.19. Oh, palsy. That's one other one. Cerebral palsy, that's another one. Cerebral palsy is a spirit also. James 2.19. James chapter 2 and verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. If you believe there's one God, you're right, you do well. The devils also believe and tremble. The devils believe in God and they're scared of him. They fear him. Devils is unclean spirits. All right? They fear that they know there's one God, and they fear him. They tremble at him. Let's get Psalm 78 verse 49. Let's see what these unclean spirits are, what they're called. Psalm 78 verse 49. What are they? Let's see. The book of Psalms, chapter 78 verse 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, uh-huh. wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. By sending what? Evil angels among them. The key word is sending. God sent them. I mean, they follow God's orders. There's no rebellion in heaven at like that Greek mythology nonsense where they got kicked out like freaking Wonder Woman and immortals and Zeus at garbage, Dante's Inferno, all that garbage. That ain't biblical. That's fairy tales. They follow orders. Evil and good alike follow God. They fear God, both sides. Left and right side angels. Left side evil, right side good. They follow orders. Including the master, including the, 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 the main one, Satan. He follow orders. I'm going to go against God. He won't know. What? Let me know damn sad. That's, that's madness in itself. All knowing, all powerful. Doesn't know his own creations are doing something evil behind his back. Don't make no sense. It's contradiction. Edomite fairy tales. Sirach 39. Rebellion in heaven. If he can't, if he can't handle his own realm, how can he sense on the realm run this one? That don't make no sense. It's madness. Don't make no type of sense. Ecclesiastes 39, 28. Sirach chapter 39, verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. Right, to do bad. Which in their fury lay on sore strokes. They do damage. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. What do they do? And appease the wrath of him that made them. They make God happy when they do it. They appease the wrath of him that made them. When God gets angry, he goes, listen, go there and do so-and-so. Send a hurricane over there. Send an earthquake over there. I don't like what I'm seeing. You understand? I think it's Mother Nature. No, no, it's not Mother Nature. That's God doing that. Mm-hmm. Mexico, that's God doing that. Puerto Rico, that's God doing that. It's no, it's no, oh man, oh, what do they call it? Um, not Mother Nature, something else. Um, natural disasters, thank you. No, it's not. It's spiritual disasters. Go ahead. Fire and hail and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. The what? Teeth, 
All these were created for vengeance. God's vengeance. Go ahead. Teeth of wild beasts uh -huh. and scorpions, serpents, and Thank the sword. Verse, 29. Read, yeah. sorry, read again. Read 29 again. I'm sorry. Fire and hail. Fire is a spirit. Hail is a spirit. And famine. There's no rain at all. That's a spirit doing that. And death. Death is also a spirit. So sometimes, like I mentioned before, in other classes before, how people who are going to die, they see it coming. They know it's, it's a presence. It's there. It's present among you. Death is a spirit itself. Go ahead. All these were created for vengeance. Now, it's not, I'm talking about the damn Final Destination stuff. The Grim Reaper got the scythe. Oh, oh, I'm going to kill you. I'm deaf. Don't fall for that stuff. That's fairy tales. God sends these things. He sends these angels to do these things, these spirits to do these things. Go ahead. Teeth of wild beasts. He puts spirits and beasts to bite. And scorpions. He puts spirits and scorpions to sting. Serpents. Uh-huh. And the sword. The sword can be the gun or the sword itself. Punishing he puts, the, he puts in the spirit of a person to use the sword against you or the gun against you. Go ahead. Punishing the wicked to destruction. Killing them. Go ahead. They shall rejoice in his commandment. They shall rejoice in God's orders. Go ahead. And they shall be ready upon earth when need is. When it's time. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. They shall not go against what he says to do. So, they, so you have angels that do good and do bad that follow orders. Because they know it makes their, their God happy. There's no disorder in heaven. That's madness. Let's get um, Psalms 148, verse 8. To go in conjunction with this. Psalms 148, verse 8. Psalms 148 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Fire and hail, snow and vapor. There earlier. Stormy wind. Stop. For That's hurricane. Stormy wind. Do what? Fulfilling his word. What they do? Fulfilling his word. See what the wind does? Stormy wind does? Hurricanes, they fulfill God's word. It's not a, it's out of nowhere, natural disaster. That's the Lord's disaster. Just like Sirach said. Let's get Genesis 1, 26. Genesis 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Yes, God said, let us. This is the Heavenly Father and the son, his son and the angels saying, let us make man in our image. Go ahead. After our likeness. Uh -huh. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Go ahead, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So him is Adam, and everybody, male and female is everybody else. So now, God made man in his image, right? Let's get chapter 2, verse 7. Let's see how he made man in his image. From what? Two verse seven, Genesis two verse seven, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. From what? Of the dust of the ground. Right. Go ahead. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Life, life and understanding. Go ahead. And man became a living soul. Go ahead. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And he put the man because he put he made Adam first, and he made everybody else afterwards. So. He formed man, the original man, and the original man, period, from the dust of the earth. What color is the dust of the earth? What color is it? The deeper you go, how dark it gets, what? It gets darker. So each, so each man back then ranged from a dark brown to a darker brown. That's simple. So the original men were black, period. Of all men who were around at the time, all of them were made in the image of God. Now, I make this point over time, I'm going to say it again. Every nation on this earth, except one, have an origin of looking Negroid or black. Asians have a history of looking black in their old time. Arabs, Hawaiians, Samoans, East Indians, uh, Japanese. Any nation outside of our own has a history of looking like, of having a dark complexion. You follow what I'm saying? All but one. There's no record of any kind ever of the so-called white man ever looking like a black man or looking Negro. He's always been pale and red because someone got to be the devil. 
That's why he stands out among the rest, like a sore thumb, literally, because he's red, like a sore thumb. So what I'm showing you is that everyone on the earth was made in the image of God, everyone. Every man is pretty much black like he is up there, all but one. One had to be the child of something else, the child of something else in particular, the devil. So let's get Sirach 33, verse 10. That's why the most I am like, that way. And even uh, instances where he, he saw him lay with he saw lay with dark women. The Lord said, "Yeah, okay, but for the most part, I'm gonna make sure your children come out looking just like you, so no, so no one will forget who you are and who you are today, who you were then and who you are today. You're gonna stay red, no matter who you lay with. That's dark. You're gonna stay red. Serena Williams, baby, that child is red. The, um, who else? The the sister from um, Jamie Foxx show, the Levi sister, Fancy. Her children look like straight Edomites. Straight Edom. Straight, yeah. Garcelle Bobbe, right. Straight Edomites. Blind hair, everything. Like, wow. No, no Jake whatsoever in them. None. Because so, Esau, can't, Esau can run, but he can't hide. Sirach 33, verse 10. Now, there are instances, some instances where you have Edomites that are dark. You do have some instances. But for predominantly red. Exodus 2, verse 16. Verse 15. The book of Exodus, chapter 2, and verse 15. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Because he had killed an Egyptian that was being his brother, and he fled to Midian. Go ahead. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters. This is Jethro with seven daughters. Go ahead. And they came and drew water and filled the, the, the throws to, to water, their troughs to water their father's flock. Uh-huh. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Right, you chased them away. Go ahead. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he so Jethro, said, same thing, Reuel, Jethro. Go ahead. He said, how is it that you are come so soon today? I get so fast. Go ahead. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. Read verse again. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. Stop. Hold that. Get numbers 12 real quick. Let's see what they were. What Jethro was. Numbers 12. Now, one of the seven daughters' names name was Zipporah, who Moses married later on. Let's see what her, ethnicity, what her ethnicity was. Numbers 12 and verse 1, I think it is. Numbers 12 and verse 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an, an Ethiopian woman. Now, my Bible has a number. It says Cushite. Do I have that in your Bible, some of y'all? Yeah. Right, Cushite means Ethiopian woman. Yep. So if she was an Ethiopian woman fathered by an Ethiopian man who was a priest over the Midianites. He was an Ethiopian priest over the people, the children of Midian. You understand? He wasn't a Midianite. He was a priest of the Midianites, which was Ethiopian. So now, go back to Exodus 2 again, please, and read verse 19. Exodus 2, verse 19. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. So now, wait a minute. They confused Moses with the what? What was their nationality? What was their nationality? What were they? They were Ethiopians, right? They would not know their brother. Cush, remember, Ham, you mentioned it earlier, didn't you, Al-Sop? Ham f- fathered four different people. He fathered the Mizra- Mizraim, Egyptians, Cush, Ethiopians, Put, Libyans, and Canaanites. Why would an Ethiopian woman not recognize, um, confuse an Egyptian with a Hebrew if Hebrews is white folks? Why? No. That means Moses had to have looked like an Egyptian for them to say that an Egyptian helped them at the well. Which means that Moses passed for what? An Egyptian. Just like Joseph did. Black people once again. And they even had pictures of, of Moses on the walls as a black man once again. We've shown countless times. But there's a debate about who, oh, you guys are black Hebrew Israelites. What does that mean? That's redundant. Black Hebrew Israelites. No, we're just Israelites, period. They were already black. They were already Hebrews. There's no need for the rest. There's no need to rest. 
That's the same equivalent as saying red Edomites. You don't have to say red Edomites. Once you say Edomites, you notice who you're talking about. Yep. Let's get um, Acts 21, 37. So, so far we have an Israelite named Joseph, passed from Egyptian, who was the father of Ephraim and Manasseh. Then we have Moses, an Israelite, who was of the tribe of Levi. Three tribes, so that's three so far, really. So, then Mo- Joseph married uh, an Egyptian woman, so obviously his children came out looking like him, or like her, or whatever, they're dark regardless. Then you have um, Moses as well, Levi. So you have two different Israelites who passed as black folks, or Africans, or black. Acts 21, verse 37, New Testament. Acts 21, verse 37. Regarding Paul, watch this. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, canst thou speak Greek? So Paul asked this centurion in Greek, can I speak to you? Read again. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, may I speak unto thee? Yes, I, go ahead. Who said, canst thou speak Greek? Because he asked the guy in Greek, can I speak unto you? And the guy said, you speak Greek? Go ahead. Art not thou that Egyptian? Are you not that particular Egyptian, this particular Egyptian man? Go ahead. Which before these days made us an uproar? And let us out into the wilderness 4,000 men that will murder us. Go ahead. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. I'm a good city. Go ahead. And I oh. beseech thee, suffer me to speak bypass- unto the people. Oh, okay. Back to it. All right. Reverse on 38 again. I didn't, I didn't bypass it. 38 again. Art not thou that Egyptian? So stop. So this, there was a particular African man that caused an uproar in the kingdom. And Paul passed for that man. Are you not that Egyptian that caused an uproar and caused murderers and so forth? Paul said, no, I'm not. I'm a Jew of Tarsus. So Paul passed for an Egyptian man, a particular one at that, a damn criminal on the loose, an African criminal on the loose. Paul said, that ain't me. I'm a Jew of Tarsus. I am of no mean city. I'm I'm of a good city. I'm not from the hood. I'm I'm not from there. That's what he was basically saying. I'm not from the hood. No mean city. Could you, uh, Enoch, could you find a uh, picture of of a man of Sudan or Watusi? Right. Put him up there. And then we're going to read that again. See, sometimes you got to get the visuals. You know, like we were talking about, the, the loosen up the coagulated brain cells. You got to. <laughs> there we go. Are you all seeing what I'm seeing? Read the scripture one more time, my brother. Acts 21 and verse 38. Art not thou that Egyptian? The man said, don't, aren't you an Egyptian? This is what he was talking about. Go ahead. Which before these days made us an uproar? Read. And led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers? So the understanding that this man is having up until the time when Paul spoke, he said, I'm looking at an Egyptian. Y'all all right? Read. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of stop, Tarsus. Stop, 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 stop. He said, no, I'm not an Egyptian. I'm a Jew. But the man thought he was an Egyptian. So what is the most, what is the scriptures telling you? That the Jews and the, and the Sudanese look the same. So you're looking at people. This is what Paul looked like to him. And Paul says, no, I'm not of Sudan. I'm not Watusi. I'm not an Egyptian at all. I'm a Jew. So the, he, what, did his color change when he said he was a Jew? No. <laughs> Go ahead. That's it. Right. So you have Joseph passing for one, Moses passing for one, and Paul. They were all Israelites, all three of them. Now let's get um. I want, I want Revelations 1 and 1. Get into the point now. I want to round about for a reason. So we have three Israelite men. Joseph is one. Paul was one. Moses is one. Right? Paul was the child of Benjamin. Moses, Levi. Joseph is the progenitor of Ephraim and Manasseh. Those two. Right? So now, so you can basically see, you can, you can count four, really. You can count your Joseph makes two, really. Because he had Ephraim and Manasseh. It obviously, came out looking like him. So you got Ephraim and Manasseh. Levi and Benjamin, all looking like black folk, right? You follow? Okay. Revelations 1 and 1. 
The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, and all three of those tribes came to be known as Jews. All, all four of those tribes. Levi, Benjamin, Ephraim, Manasseh came to be known later on as Jews. Or Israelites or Hebrews. Go ahead. The revelation of Jesus Christ. What was, his, what was Christ's ethnicity? He was a Jew, right? Just like Moses was. He was an Israelite. I'll say Israelite. Just like Joseph was. Just like Paul was. Just like Moses was, right? Okay, go ahead. Which God gave unto him. No, we just want to get to the top. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revealing or manifestation or exposure of Jesus Christ. How he looked. Go ahead. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now, let's jump to verse 13. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven... Verse, I'm sorry, verse 12. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Because it was behind him. Go ahead. He turned around. Go ahead. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Not eight, not nine. Seven. Amalek. Seven. Go ahead. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Because this guy looked like Christ. This guy looked like Christ. Because remember, John walked with him. Go ahead. One like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Golden girdle, go ahead. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. 14 again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Stop. Here's the argument. White like wool, brother. Not the texture, just white like wool is. Not woolly like like wool's texture, but white like wool. That's the argument you're bringing now. Mm -hmm. it's, it was not the texture, these but rather a comparison of the color. These are Negroes that's, that's contending with these this. These are coons. And, and understand, when they say that, they have Brad Pitt in their mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have Christian Bale in their mind. They have um, Bob Barker in their mind. Whoever. Mickey Mouse, whoever. That's what's in their mind. Trump, that's who that Jesus is. That's what they, so they, they leave out of here. He was black when they left out of here. But when you go back into the world, their mind gets corrupted. And slowly they start to peel back the, the black skin and you see a white dude underneath. Or a white woman, right. Read again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. They're saying the white like wool. The white like wool part is referring to comparison, not the texture. But rather, it was white the way wool is white. Right? That's just saying. Go ahead. As white as snow. Uh-huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Watch this part. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his face as the sound of many waters. Now, that Sudanese brother on the, on the screen was very dark. And when it says feet burned in a furnace, it means he was very dark. Just like darker than that. Darker than Joseph, darker than that, darker than Paul, darker than Moses, dark, very dark. But they, but they want to argue about the hair, because if once you argue the hair, then you're gonna make him white again. That's the objective. I'm not, we're not stupid up here. We do this for a long time. So what Bob, what what, what confuses them, Deacon Yalsop and Deacon Malachi, is the white light wall. So let's read it. Let's take out the white. Give me Daniel 7 9 now. Take the white out. Take the, let's just say you're right. Let's just say that's not referring to texture. That's referring to comparison as in it was white like wool is white. Not the texture, but rather white the way wool is white. You know, sheep are white. Did Daniel 7 verse 9. Daniel 7 verse 9. Because they argue, oh, um, it says white like wool. White like wool. So it's not referring to the texture like wool. It's referring to the color like the sheep. You know what I'm talking about. So let's get a scripture that leaves the word white out entirely. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. Uh -huh. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, mm -hmm. and the Ancient of Days did sit. This is the Heavenly Father. This is his Father sitting. Go ahead. Who's and he sit on. Oh, did what? Did sit. Sat. Now, for him to sit down, he requires what? Oh, All about those spirits. This is a spirit, though. God's a spirit. He sat as invisible behind down somewhere, obviously. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow. Wait a minute. Now he's wearing clothes. God's a spirit. 
How can the spirit wear clothes? With a garment on. He's sitting down with, on, his, on his invisible behind with clothes, with nobody on the clothes. It's just, it's just a sheet floating with holes in it. Ooh, I'm the an ancient of days. Ooh. Madness, bro. Madness. Read again. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit. Whose garment was white as snow. So this right here, white as snow. The ass is a comparison. White as snow. Go ahead, watch this. And the hair of his head. Now it sounds like revelations. And the hair of his head. Go ahead. Wait a minute. If he had a head, he had a body. Yeah. <laughs> and it, Yeah, go ahead. And the hair of his head. And the hair of his head. Like the pure wool. Where's the white at? It ain't there. Argue that now. I'll get that part. Okay, Revelation 7, Revelation 1, 13, 14, we're off. We're sorry. It's a comparison of the white front. Explain this here. His hair was like the pure wool. Explain that part there. You can't explain that part. So now, now so it's the Heavenly Father's hair is like the pure wool. If it's like the pure wool, that means it's wool-like, right? Definition, please. I have a dictionary. I have many dictionaries. I have an old dictionary. This one is from 1971. I have one from 1928 and one from 1913. But 71 is the best one. It's more definitive. I, this is the dictionary I have. You ask, go, go, go ahead to cover. Make sure it's real. I'm going to tell I'm lying. This is I have at home. I have this at home. I scan it on my scanner. I send it here. Compact edition, of, compact edition of the Oxford English Dictionary, P through Z. So oh. we're going to find wool there. Wait a minute. There's W's in between those two. Deacon. But a simple... People out there. Once you put the word them. Oxford up there, you killed them. Oxford, this, this is not a comic book that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. and Oxford. It's, and it's volume two, so volume one is A through uh, N. A through N, I believe. Or O, A through O. A through O. So go to the next one. Index, there we go. So that's the inside. I think it's fake. That's the inside of the book. I, oh, I opened the book, I turned the page, and that's what I see there. The compact edition of the Oxford English Dictionary, uh, volume 2, P2Z, complete text, reproduced micrograph micrographically. I saw the, it's very small letters. Go down. Let's see what was published. Go down. What year does that say? Oxford University Press, 1971. That you know, I'm not making it up. <laughs> go to that edition, please. We'll look up Wool. Woolly. Woolly. That's that's the well, go to Woolish. Woolish. Right there. Stop there. Go there. Resembling wool, woolly. See right there, the first picture? He has hair still, right? That hair, well, yeah. That hair is thicker. It's thicker on the back. It's thicker and warmer. You have the top layer, which is more light, whatever. But the, thick, the lower you go, the thicker it gets. Go down some more. I'm a better picture than that. I think there's better ones. Let me see. Like that right there. The white one right there on the left, that one's good. That's an example of the lowest layer of the hair. It's thick and woolly. It's going to show you in the, in the um, dictionary. Go back. Yeah, but go back to Wooly now. Go back to the dictionary. Go back to the dictionary again. Read that again. Wooly, consisting of? Consisting of wool. Uh-huh. Relating to wool. Containing wool. Definition two. Number two, right? Of the nature. Texture. Ah, of the nature. Texture. Go ahead. Or appearance of wool. Watch this. Resembling wool. Watch this. Wool-like. Wool-like. Like the pure wool. It's wool-like, right? Go down to the highlighter part. B, having hair resembling wool. Wool-like. Applied especially to Negroes. Explain. Whoa. <laughs> Explain. Whoa. <laughs> Yo, can you lend me that book, man? A dictionary? <laughs> I'll bring it back for you probably next year, you know? Uh, <laughs> or all you have to Google is physiology books uh, and put in, in Google Negroid and wool. They uh -huh. have their, any, any type of physiology book mm -hmm. that describes Negroes, uh -huh. it's going to describe them in wool, old or new. Right. Wool's going to describe wool, yeah. But this is the 1970s dictionary. Having hair resembling wool applied especially to Negroes. Well, whether it's in texture, wool-like. So the Heavenly Father has Negroid hair. The thing you got to think about in your mind is, like I said earlier, 
Look at all of the steps that we are reading and going through to back up what the Bible clearly says on its own. Yep. All for the purpose of a so-called Negro that hates himself. Mm -hmm. Because with all of these facts, all the his, we done went all the way to Oxford University. And that still ain't in the, in the 70s. And that still ain't enough for him. That's what you call sickness. He wants to be, he wants to be Esau so bad he hates what we read now. But Esau just, just puts up a false picture of Christ. And he had denied from the first word in Genesis to the last book, the last word in Revelation. All because of his master. So, Daniel again, 7 9. So, what y'all call, what they call in the world, nappy. But kinky is woolly. It's wool. It's God's hair. That's the Heavenly Father's hair. That's why we tell you sisters all the time, be proud of your hair. You brothers, be proud. Well, particularly y'all on this side of the room. Be proud of your hair. The Heavenly Father has hair just like you. Try to get rid of or hide or perm out or whatever you be doing. Have, take pride and have confidence in your hair. Now, we can't force you by law to stop wearing that stuff y'all wear on your head. Well, I, we, we can only advise you to have some of self-confidence in how your heavenly father looks, they look like him. Most of made us black men in his image, and y'all are made in the image of us. There should be some pride or confidence in that somewhere, somewhere in that mind of yours. But y'all have Caesar in your mind, Thor, Peter Parker, that's who y'all have in your mind, or Becky and Amber, or Jenny, or, 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 or oh, what's the name, Jenny, oh, and Tiffany, whatever. That's who you have in your mind. We can't force you, we can only advise you to do it. Get a, yeah. Uh, can you give me the book of Hebrews, chapter 1? No, for, I'm going. Oh, oh, you're going there? I'm oh, going okay, there. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm stop, going there stop, right stop, now. Stop, Hebrews stop. 1. Stop <laughs> <laughs> it. You said you wanted Daniel. Hebrews, Daniel 7 again, then Hebrews 1. All right. I'm going to go back to that so it was a thought. Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. <laughs> verse 9, Deacon. Uh-huh. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit. He sat down with his body. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow. Which he wore on his body. He was white. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. And he had Negro hair on his head. He made man in his image. So the original man was what? That's it. Nothing to, there's no argument there. There's nothing to debate. It's what it is. Go ahead. His throne was like the fiery flame. And his wheels as burning fire. Because the Heavenly Father got chariots too. Imagine how big that one is. I can't even begin to understand that one. So now, let's get Hebrews 1 and verse 2. So the Heavenly Father has hair. Remember, I, I'm a devil's advocate. We were wrong, supposedly, about um, Revelations 1 where it says, hair white like wool. That's a firm to comparison, but you can't explain the like wool part, like the pure wool. Explain that. But let's just see. Let's see if we're wrong regarding the texture of the hair in Revelations 1.13. Watch this. Hebrews 1, verse 2. No, you read one. Read one. Or read one. Okay, read one down. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times... Yeah, and yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. Read again. God, who at sundry times. That's the Father. God, ancient of days, at sundry times, different times. Go ahead. And in diverse manners. Different ways. Spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Right. Spoke to us through the prophets. Go ahead. Hath in these last days uh -huh. spoken unto us by his son. Spoken to us by his son. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things. And every one. Go ahead. By whom also he made the world. Let us. Make man in our image. That's who he's talking about. Let us make man in our That's who he's referring to in Genesis 1. Go ahead. Who being the brightness of his glory. So the son is the brightness of whose glory? The father's glory. Go ahead. And the express image of his person. Stop. What does express image mean? It means you look exactly like your father. So... Revelations 1.13 is off regarding the white like wool. It says the father's hair is like pure wool. If he looks like his father, then this hair must be like what? Like pure wool. You cannot argue us. Stop. Stop challenging us. Stop it. Just learn. Just 
I know you're hungry for knowledge. You want to learn. Just do that. Stop proposing these nonsense arguments. It's a waste of time. You're going to, you're going to learn regardless. You're going to get school regardless. Read again. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. He is the ex no, express image means the exactly exact identical image. Go ahead. Of his person. Of his person. Go ahead. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Sat down next to his father who he looks just like. Identically, identical with. Let's get get um strong so they're gonna use strongs now. That's a new that's a new tactic now. We can't do it with the Bible. Let's run to the concordance. Ah yes, we got you. No, you don't. But strong, Oxford is not good enough. It's not good enough. <laughs> you got you gotta go when it comes to Negroes, you gotta go levels. You gotta just keep going down to reach the bottom. Click um search please. Search go I'm sorry, go down, go down, go down. It's already there. Yep, now I want you to click the number. It's an express image. Click the number. In the Greek now. Different language. Different language, digging y'all. So we got to go that far. It's sad. Yeah, G5, whatever. I don't care. G5481. Click the number next to the express image. Strong's G5481. Ah, <sighs> character, character, whatever. Number one, read that, um, Cap. Yes, sir. Number, we all the way down. Character, the instrument used for engraving or carving. That's not the definition you're looking for, isn't it? Doesn't matter. Doesn't match, doesn't match the scripture. Go ahead. The mark stamped upon the instrument or wrought out on it. Doesn't fit the definition either. Go ahead. A mark or figure burned in or stamped on an impression. That isn't it either. Go ahead. The exact expression. The exact ex That's the one we want. The exact expression. The image of any person or thing. Marked likeness, precise reproduction in every respect. Precise reproduction in every respect. Next, next part. That's the killer there. That is it. Well, next one. Facility. At I.e. an example facsimile. Mm -hmm. What is a facsimile? Go to the definition of facsimile, please. And I would say precise reproduction in every respect. Maybe that's too hard. Let's get let's get simpler now. Facsimile. Read that, please. An exact copy, especially of written or printed material. Synonym, synonyms. Copy, reproduction, duplicate, photocopy, replica, likeness. Stop. Make man in our image and in our what? Go ahead. Print, reprint, print out, off print. Now it's going somewhere. I was going to paper now. You can get the point. Copy, reproduction, duplicate, replica, likeness. It's, so when it says express image, even in another language, it means express image. He looks exactly like his father okay. in every respect. Now watch, in every respect. Now watch this here. Find me the image where they have the so-called Greek Orthodox repainting Jesus as Esau. You know what I'm talking about? From the Russian icons. Give me, watch this, Deacon. Because of what we just read here, it said that the facsimile is an exact reproduction. So, let's see if we can find that picture. Oh, yeah. This. This is not what we've been reading. Zoom that in. You see this? At, right. That ain't going along with the, with the uh, dictionary and the facsimile and all of that. Y'all see this? Go back to that definition that the deacon had up there. Then the other about the express image. The express image. A copy. A copy right. Copy, reproduction, duplicate, photocopy, replica, likeness. Carbon copy. Carbon, none of that was what you just saw the so-called Greeks doing. Y'all see that, don't you? But these Negroes, I want to call them something else, but I got to be cool. Yeah, I want to call them something else because they, dis they will disavow all of this because they love master so much. They denigrate the whole Bible. That's, that's the Jews are black. The Israelites came over on slave ships. All of the information that you read out of the Bible, they disregard all of that trying to find one word.
Talking about his hair was white like wool. Oh, it ain't really woolly. It's like wool. Stupid. We just read that it ain't. We read that the whole thing is talking about talking about woolly hair and hair of Negroes. Whether you call it likeness or not, you hate yourself. You need to go to the doctor. He was again. I'm gonna be that part. He was again. He was one again. God, who at sundry times and in no, he was one, one, verse three. Verse three. I'm sorry. Verse three. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. That's all I want. So he is the express image. The express copy, reproduction, duplicate, photocopy, replica, and likeness of his father. Period. That's what it means. Whether in English or Greek or whatever word you want to use, it's saying he looks just like his father. Y'all understand? So there's no more argument in Revelation 113 because it says white like wool. Okay, no problem. Then 7 verse 9, Hebrews 1. Now what? There's ways around nonsense. When it, says white, when it says white like wool, it means like wool as in texture. Don't fall for the semantics. It's referring to if, he's the, if he has the same face as his father, he has the same hair as his father. There's no debate in that. Y'all got that? The exact expression, the image of any person or thing, marked likeness, precise reproduction in every respect. As an, an instant example, facsimile. And that's what we just showed you. And then we showed you the contrast of that when the so-called white man during the Renaissance period was the destroying the iconic images through the period called iconoclasm where they stone cold lied and destroyed the images and painted them looking like leprous, looking like leprosy. And they ain't said nothing about that. Looking like them. Looking like them. Abnormal. Like the scriptures say in Maccabees and they paint the likeness of let's their let's, images. Let's get that. Let's get that. First Maccabees, 348. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. Mm -hmm. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. That's what we was looking at with that image. Put that image back up there again and read that. Read that again. Mm -hmm. This image goes with that scripture. Every time the scripture is read, this needs to be put up there. Yeah. Read it again. Everybody look up at the screen so you can get the visuals along with the verse. And laid <laughs> open the book of the law. Wherein the heathen... Stop. The heathen is the so-called white man because he's not Israel. He's not an Israelite. Wherein the heathen sought to do what? S had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They put their image as us. That's what that's talking about. They put their image as Christ. They put their image as Paul. They put their image as Moses, Solomon, David. That's what that means. They took our four parents' lives and lied on it and said that that's them. And that's the reason why the little young ugly children running around here talking about, oh, they're G, they're next to God, and they call you niggas, and you are the jewels of God. They lied, but you can't blame them because if they are on borrowed time. I I expect them to do the things that they do. The thing that gets me is when we disregard what naturally belongs to us and follows a train right off the track, right off the cliff. Go ahead, Deacon. That's enough for Your me. Second Maccabees four. These are the kind of people that accept that. That accept that image. You know, they, they, they can see that thinking outside, but they'll say, you know one thing? It doesn't matter. Right. He died for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's that slave mind. That's that Stockholm syndrome. Go, right Second Maccabees four, and we're gonna read verse mm, sixteen. This is the this this is the reason why they're gonna accept that iconoclasm right there in that picture. They're going to argue about white like wool or like wool. They're going to argue that for this reason right here. Second Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 16. I'm going to read to you on one verse, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wayland Syndrome. Wayland Syndrome is in one verse, verse Se 16. Second Maccabees, 4, verse 16. By reason whereof sore calamity came upon them. By the Greeks, go ahead. For they had them to be their enemies and avengers. The Greeks were made to be our enemies and to avenge as vengeance against us from the Lord for being rebellious. But watch this. Watch we turn, watch we turn we turn our enemies into something else. Go ahead. Whose custom they followed so earnestly. Whose religion we follow so earnestly. That we'll accept that picture right there. The whitewash picture. Go ahead. Hold it, hold it. You gotta examine the word earnestly. Yeah. 
earnestly means that you are, you are so gung-ho in following lies yep. that you would disregard mountains of proof. Yep. You would disregard mountains of facts mm -hmm. and information and records and scripture. Yep. Earnestly meaning that I'm going to look Stop. past all of that yep. to find a piece of blade of lie and put my whole life on that. That's yep. what these Negroes have done. Yep. Go ahead. Whose custom they followed so earnestly and unto whom they desired to be like in all things. That's the result. Right. They desire to be like the white man. So they're going to do video responses about how you can be saved. Not about the Chinese man. Not about their aunt or their grandfather. But rather Biff and Amber and Jim and Billy and Billy Bob. You want to save them. That's what your mind is. Because you're, you're Hellenized. Modern day Hellenized people. That's what it is. They're, they're called the, the Steppin' Squad. Steppin'. It's the name from now on. The Steppin' Squad. Django. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's of his dear son, the father's son. Go ahead. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Uh -huh. Even the forgiveness of sins. We. Go ahead. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. 15 again. 15 who, again. Who is the image of the invisible God. He is the image of the God who you're not allowed to see in person. That's why it says he is the, he's the visible image of the invisible God. Not only is he the image of God, he is the express image of God. The exact replica, reproduction, duplicate of his father. Go ahead. Yeah, now, yeah, now I'm going to get it. The, the, second, oh, go ahead, go ahead. the firstborn of every creature. And the first thing the Lord made before anything else was him. An exact duplicate replica of himself. And he used him, and he used him to do what? Read the rest? Read the rest of it? For by him were all things created. Then he took that replica and used that replica to make everything else and everyone else and everything else. Go ahead. That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Why do you think the angels bow to him? Because he made them. That's why they bow to him. They carried him to his father in Daniel. They carried him to his father in Daniel. Because they, they understand this is the big brother here. That's, that's, the, the, that's the son of God right there. Y'all understand? Right, it brought him over. To, it brought him over to the ancient. Let's get that too. Let's we'll, we'll get this first. We'll finish this up first. We'll get that. Read on. And well, he is. Oh, I'm sorry. Read apart all things. Where is the bottom it? of verse 16. I'm sorry. Or all things were created by him. All things were created by him. Go ahead. And for him. And for him to inherit. Next verse. And he is before all things. Because he's the firstborn of every creation. Go ahead. And by him all things consist. All things were in existence because of him. His son. Now, let's get Daniel again. Seven again. Not that Trinity crap. The Trinity nonsense. Two birds and one stone. Daniel 7, we're going to read verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man. Ain't that what John said in Revelations? One like the Son of Man? It's about the same exact person. Go ahead. And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven uh -huh. and came to the Ancient of Days. And he approached the Ancient of Days. Not the one and the same person. He approached the Ancient of Days. Go ahead. And they brought him near before him. And they... Brought him, the angels he came with, brought him near before his father. Brought him near. His father is mentioned in the ninth verse. And the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the yep. hair of his head like the pure wool. So the angels brought Christ to him. Right. That's it. So it's two different. So we have father and son in one verse. Second Corinthians 4 and 4. We're going, read it. We're going to read it again and again and again. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. And whom, in whom, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Right. That's why they, that go back to 2 Maccabees 4. That Willie Lynch syndrome, that Stockholm, 
trying to say, Master, that's blinded minds. Go ahead. Of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto Saying them. It again. Paul said it over and over again. That he's the image of God. Now let's get John. John, I guess 14, 8. 14 and 7. Let's see what, this, what the disciples ask him regarding his father, whom no man's allowed to see in person. The express image. Yep. John 14, verse 8. John chapter 14 and verse 8. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Me again? Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth Christ, us. Christ, show us your Father. We'd like to know. Make us feel good to know, to see, to see your Father. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? So have I been so long time with you, you don't, you don't recognize, you don't see me, Philip? Go ahead. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. He that hath seen me hath seen my Father. Why? He is the express image of his person. So that's it again. Yep. So there's no arguing that. Hello, this is, I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.